He's trying. He's, he's trying. trying. He's getting back up to his. Hey, everybody. Welcome to our YouTube channel and hope you're doing well. In today's video, we will be discussing a mixed martial artist currently competing in the UFC who is seen as a prodigal talent by many, Cyril Bongamin Gan. Gan has been a revelation since making his move to the UFC, with many already believing him to be the next big thing in MMA. But how did Cyril become so highly regarded by fans? And like many people's opinion, why is the French fighter destined for greatness? All of this will be revealed in our countdown today, so let's start with Number 5 Cyril Ghosn was born in France on April 12, 1990. Ghosn, unlike his fellow fighters, didn't start practicing MMA when he was young. In fact, MMA was not even a consideration for Ghosn. During those days, he was into football and basketball. At one point, he'd harbored thoughts of becoming a professional footballer, but for some reason didn't pursue that dream. In a recent interview with Ariel Hawani, Ghosn revealed that football was his passion and he would have continued if it wasn't for the high stakes nature of the game, which brought with it a lot of pressure as compared to MMA. So later on in his teenage years, he started working as a salesman for a furniture company and was set to make it his full-time profession until one day, a close friend of Gan persuaded him to start a career in MMA. He introduced Gan to a Muay Thai tournament in 2015, which caught the interest of Cyril, motivating him to make his first steps towards MMA. <coughs> He began his career by fighting in the AFMT Muay Thai Championship in 2016. He became the heavyweight champion in his very first fight in the promotion by defeating Jeremy Jean. He would go on unbeaten throughout his Muay Thai career as he amassed a perfect record of 12 wins and 12 matches. This led him to being fully prepared to take on the next challenge in his career, which was making the leap to MMA. Number four. After his successful stint in Muay Thai, Gan's coach, Fernand Lopez, asked him to start a career in MMA, to which he obliged. He started training for his MMA career by joining the MMA factory gym in France, where he developed his skills as a martial artist. Gan was identified by TKO Fight Promotions and was signed in 2018. Like his Muay Thai career, Gan once again found himself in a heavyweight title fight in his first match for TKO. He faced Bobby Sullivan for the vacant title and instantly made an impression on fans by submitting him via chokehold in the first round of the fight. Because the fight got finished very early, many weren't able to figure out Gan's strengths. But in his first title defense against Adam Daiska, fans got to see the whole package. The fight was played on his feet for the majority of it, with Gan imposing himself on Daiska by throwing jabs and vicious uppercuts at him. Also, Daiska's attempts to strike at Gan were futile as the Frenchman was too elusive and quick in his movement. The fight was going to be finished in the very first round, but Daiska put on a brave front and somehow survived the first round, even after suffering numerous blows to the body and face. The second round began and Gan, unlike the previous round, went at a slower pace, carefully picking his shots, in the process picking apart his opponent strategically. The fight also showed the cool-headedness of Gan as a fighter, as he never let the disappointment of not finishing Daiska in the first round put him down. Instead, he calmly and strategically proceeded to dismantle his opponent. He finished the fight in the second round by TKO, reclaiming the belt. In his second defense of the title, he would face Souza for the belt in which Gan showed his ruthless side by absolutely pummeling Souza to finish the match in the first round. His brilliant exploits in TKO Canada earned him a chance at the big time, which was the UFC. Number three. After his successful expedition in TKO, Gan signed a contract with the UFC in 2019. In fact, he was the eighth fighter from France to sign for the UFC. Gan's first fight in the UFC came against Rafael Pessoa, in a Shevchenko vs. Carmus fight night event in Uruguay. Gan made light work of his opponent by submitting him via arm choke, thus making it a victorious start in the UFC for the Frenchman. He would then string a number of wins by defeating fighters such as Tanner Bozer, confirming the fact that this guy was a serious talent and needed to be tested more against elite opposition to see his true worth as a fighter. He was then pitted against former heavyweight champion Junior Dos Santos, his first real test in the UFC. In the fight, Gan once again impressed us a lot, as his superior movement and precise counter punches and kicks to the leg neutralized the threat of Dos Santos in stand-up. In the second round, Gan caught Dos Santos with an elbow strike to the head from which Dos Santos was not able to recover from, resulting in a TKO victory for Gan. There you are with the UFC belt. Can you just say what this moment means to you right now? I don't know exactly. <laughs> 
the manner in which he dealt with Junior Dos Santos confirmed that Gon was going to be a huge threat in the heavyweight division going forward. And that's how it turned out to be as Gon would go on to defeat the likes of number 6 ranked Jarzinho Rosenstrike and 5th ranked Alexander Volkov. In his fight against Volkov, Gon put on a masterclass in striking and slick movement. The fight was very even in the initial two rounds, with Volkov ahead in the number of strikes thrown, but as the fight went on, Gon's confidence grew, and he dictated the pace of the match and was in cruise control through his conditioning and aggressive counterpunching, earning him a comfortable unanimous decision victory. The most fascinating thing about Gon is that, for a heavyweight, his feet movement and positioning is quite extraordinary. It's very hard to remember a heavyweight who possessed exemplary movement and slick striking skills as much as Cyril Gaon. Also, his fight IQ was another reason for his success inside the octagon. All of these wins proved that Gaon was a championship quality fighter ready to challenge the heavyweight hitters of the division, such as champion Francis Ngannou and heavyweight great Stipe Miocic. There were talks that Gaon would face up against his old sparring partner Francis Ngannou for the title. How would you describe the sparring matches that you and Francis used to have? This man is really tough. It's not a joke. <laughs> but Nganu was holding out for a super fight against John Jones, which the UFC was having trouble sorting as Jones wanted to take his time before making the move to heavyweight. So everyone was wondering where Gan was in the whole title picture. <laughs> At that time, the UFC had thought of an Ngannou versus Derek Lewis fight for the title, but due to several disagreements with Francis and his team, the UFC decided to make an interim title fight between Lewis and Gan at UFC 265, giving Gan a first crack at some silverware in the UFC. Number two. After the fight was made for the interim title at UFC 265 in Houston, many favored Gan to get the job done, but it was Lewis who had all the fan support as throughout his UFC career, he had been the crowd favorite. So in this case, along with dealing with Lewis, he had to deal with the hostile crowd of Houston who were rooting for their hometown hero, Lewis. <laughs> also, the fact that it was his first title shot in the UFC brought along with it some kind of pressure. But that is one of the things we believe that Gan has no trouble dealing with as he has a very chill personality. <laughs> Their pre-match face-off was intense as Lewis tried to assert his dominance by trying to intimidate Gon, getting all up in his face and then raising the interim belt in front of the fans. Gon, being his usual self, didn't react to it at all and kind of just shrugged it off with a smile. In comparison to Lewis, style-wise, Gan was a much better fighter overall in terms of athleticism, striking, and fight IQ. But there was always a threat of Gan being caught by Lewis as the latter possessed dynamite in his hands and was the joint holder of the most knockouts in the division with 12. It was the experienced pro in Lewis versus the new kid on the block in Gan. In the walkout to the octagon, Gan was once again booed by the Houston fans, but he seemed to be unaffected by it as there was a focused and determined look about him. Do you understand that you trolled the fans in Houston when you came out to that song? Because they actually thought Derek Lewis was coming out. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was at first, ooh, and uh, a few seconds after when, when he saw my face, it, it was a boo. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis's arrival was met with loud cheers with many fans in Houston expecting the season pro to win the title. But as the bell rang, things turned out to be as expected as Gan put on an absolute clinic in striking and fast movement. Gan set the tempo of the fight right at the offing and picked apart Lewis strategically. He literally toyed with Lewis throughout the whole fight, with Lewis being unable to match him. Cyril had a lot to prove to the fans going into the fight, but since his UFC debut, there were always question marks raised on his lack of finishing ability as he never had won a match by knockout in the UFC. Gan picked the perfect moment to register his first finish in the UFC by putting down Lewis with a flurry of punches to the body and the head. To be fair, it turned out to be a total mismatch as Lewis could only throw 12 strikes at Gan for the whole match. His third round finish of Lewis made him the interim heavyweight champion of the UFC, thus cementing him as a bona fide contender for the heavyweight belt and also extending his perfect MMA record to 10 wins. By winning the interim belt, he also created history by becoming the first French-born champion in the UFC. And by the looks of it, it won't be long until he becomes the heavyweight champion of the UFC. 
His title win was met with much praise and fanfare from the French fans as they gathered in numbers at his MMA factory gym in France. He says that the title win is a present from me to the French people. As many as 600 people came to visit him as he posed with them for pictures with the belt. Gon's crowning moment came by becoming the interim champion and then by extending his perfect unbeaten record suggests only one thing, that this man is destined for great things in champion status in MMA. Most likely his next match will be a title shot either against the champion Nganu or the winner between a Jones and Nganu fight, or a third fight between Miocic. One thing's for sure, that whoever faces Gon will most likely need a very good game plan to beat him. Otherwise, it would be a headache for the opposing fighter to deal with him due to the various strength that he brings inside the octagon. A dream fight for fans would be a fight with either Nganu or Jones. Even if Gan were to lose that fight, he is too good of a fighter to not come back and win that title again. But talking about losing, that man hasn't tasted defeat yet in his career, and by the looks of it, it would take a monumental effort from somebody to stop Gan. But regardless of the future, Cyril Gan is well on his way to MMA greatness. Well, that's what we got for the Frenchman. Do you think Cyril has what it takes to become champion? Is he a serious threat to Nganu and Jones? Let us know in the comments below. Remember to drop a like and subscribe to our channel for more MMA content. Until next time.